I'm at one of my favorite places, the uh, Railroads B and O Railroad Station Museum in Ellicott City, or Ellicott's Mills, as it was known in the 19th century. Ellicott City is a nifty old mill town, uh, a little bit about 13 or 14 miles west of Baltimore, and the old B and O Railroad Station, which was closed as a station after Hurricane Agnes. In 1972 has been turned into a museum. I want to show you my favorite part. This is the old freight house and we're going to walk in here and let the light, <coughs> the camera adjust to the light a little bit and then I will show you my favorite part. This is, we're going to walk down to Baltimore, right? We're going to walk 13 miles here in about 40 feet. So here's my favorite part of the museum. It's a 40 foot long diorama of the first 13 miles of the B&O Railroad, which was the first 13 miles of rail in America. This is the, uh, the Roundhouse, which is the main museum of the B&O in Baltimore City. This is uh, West Baltimore, sometimes called Pigtown, H.L. Mencken land. And here we have Mount Clare Mansion, built by Charles Carroll the Barrister, to differentiate him from all the other Charles Carrolls, such as Charles Carroll of Carrollton, who was the last signer of the Declaration of Independence to die. There goes a train carrying a bit of coal. And we move west along the old main line, which splits at Relay, Maryland, uh, and this is the Relay or Viaduct Hotel, which was built by the railroad after steam came in and horses were no longer pulling the cars. Originally they were all horse-drawn. This is the Thomas Viaduct, which was completed in 1835. It was, I'm told, the longest, second longest bridge in the world when it was built. Uh, exceeded only by the Tower Bridge in London. It's still the longest curved stone arch viaduct in the world. It's still in use. Probably always will be the longest and oldest because nobody's building bridges like this anymore. It's held up a whole lot better than a lot of new bridges, newer bridges. We move along the uh, Patapsco River Valley and the railroad past several mills, ironworks, all of which were washed away in a huge flood in 1868. This is the old swinging bridge, the descendant of which is still there. I remember scaring my little sister half to death on that thing when I was a kid. And along the railroad, along the old main line, and 13 miles later, we go right after we go past these quarries that were used to build a lot of the uh, railroad infrastructure, an awful lot of Ellicott City. And here we are in Ellicott City, or Ellicott's Mills, as it was known then. This is the old St. Paul's Church, where Babe Ruth was married for the first time. There's the freight house where we are. There's the old station itself. There's the tail end of a passenger train. Harry Truman will look pretty good on that little thing at the end. Here's Main Street in Ellicott City which looks almost identical today. This is Church Street. This is Angelo's Cottage, or Angelo's Castle, which was built in 18, the 1830s. And then we have the houses up on Church Street. This is the uh, remains of the turntable, where they used to turn locomotives around. And another quick look in the other direction. I think I've exceeded the time allowed.